Hey everyone, it's Kate. I'm here at Shine and it's been a bit. I've been on quarantine for COVID. I did contract it. Um, so I'm in the recovery phase right now. I'm still giving myself a few days before I'm with people and um, I will put the air purifier on and, and sanitize here before I leave, leave the studio today. Um, I did want to connect with my students and anyone else who would benefit from this practice. I'm gonna do what I'm calling a recovery practice. So this practice would be great recovering from any illness. Um, I'm at the point where I haven't done much and I really am feeling all just like stiff from being on the couch and I'm all curled up. So this is a way to unfold and get the energy flowing and get my um, body back to its full capacity for health. Um, this is going to be a three-part practice, so if you're using it as a recovery from illness, there's um, a section that was all reclined and you might feel like you're finished after that part. Then we'll do a few things standing, like I said, just to get the energy and circulation moving again. And then we'll do the third part will be actually a little bit deeper stretches. So more, if you've been feeling stiff, um, give you an opportunity to stretch out. This would be a great practice for anyone that just wants a really well-rounded, gentle practice. Maybe you're newer to yoga, um, maybe you don't feel exceptionally physically fit and you want to try yoga. This is a really great practice just to nurture your body and to connect with your breath, calm your mind, and you know, as we say, you're at Shine to ignite your heart and soul. All right, um, I think before we get going, I did wanna just mention something about congestion. So um, I, I, as I said, I'm recovering from COVID. Mine all just pretty much felt like a cold. Really, it felt like strep throat is what it felt like for me. Um, you can still feel hear a little graveliness in my throat and sinuses probably. Um, so if you're recovering from anything with any bit of congestion, um, inversions are something to consider for yourself, whether they feel like they'll be helpful or not for you. So um, we'll count for this practice an inversion anytime your head is down and anything that was in your sinuses might you know, move up and out, which can be a benefit, right? If, if you feel like you've got something stuck in your sinuses, maybe going upside down for a little bit will kind of help you be able to blow your nose and get rid of that. Other times you go upside down, you just can't breathe at all. So I want you to make sure you can breathe really well. So I've made um, some modifications in the practice in case you're congested. Having said that, the first part is all laying down. So if you don't feel good laying on your back, you can fast forward to part two or maybe check out another practice that it doesn't have so much laying down. All right, so as always, make sure that you can breathe really well. That's, that's one of the main points of yoga. If you're not breathing well, then your energy is um, not flowing well and you wanna do what you can do to make sure that you are able to breathe comfortably and well, that you don't feel dizzy or lightheaded and that you honor your body, rest when you need to rest and modify the posture so that they all feel as good as possible for you. All right, let's get to it. We are gonna start laying down and you can see my setup over there. I've got a chair that you can use instead of a wall for some of the portions of the practice. Um, wall space would be beneficial or just a door frame is great. You know, a lot of times we don't have a lot of open wall space, but if you have somewhere to put your hand, your arm in the door frame, that's what you need. I have two yoga blocks over there. Um, pillows would work just fine. I do have a strap, uh, so a towel or a scarf would work and a soft blanket is, is always nice for yoga practice. All right, so let's come lay down for a few moments and we're just gonna get settled in to our bodies. You can put your hands wherever you like. I like to put them on my belly or maybe one on heart and one on belly. Low ribs is nice. And I'm in constructive rest position, which is where my feet are wide and then my knees are knocked knee together. And then close your eyes. Just take a moment to be more aware of what ha is happening inside your body. So not so much in your mind, we're gonna try to kind of calm the mind today, but that you're feeling into your body. Try to relax your body into the moment.
And then begin to feel the rhythm of your breath. And by that I mean the relationship between the inhale and the exhale. And also considering the pauses between the inhales and exhales and exhales and inhales. And just see if you can begin to slow your breath down a little bit. Let your belly rise on the inhale and let it fall on the exhale. Have a sense of being more patient with your breath. So you take just a little more time to receive the inhalation fully. And then you make the effort to exhale completely. Now, if you're recovering from anything to do with a respiratory issue, you know, be conscientious that changing the rhythm of the breath can sometimes make us feel a little anxious. So just do what you can. Let, you know, let, let yourself be really gentle in this practice today. All right, we'll stay here for a few more moments. I'm gonna adjust my camera just so I can maybe not have to try to speak so loud across the room. And then I'll probably have to move it back here when we stand up so I can fit. Okay. I did create a little template that I'm gonna do my best to follow along with. I tend to make plans and then change them. So um, I am gonna try to stick to this and, and you can find this on my social media if you're interested later. Um, and that's Kobe Noble, Kobe Kate Noble. All right, so now we're gonna get a little bit of movement. And just, all we're gonna do is just hug one knee into your chest. It doesn't have to be a tight hug, just very gentle. Use your hands to support your shin and really actually try to let your foot just dangle, let your foot relax. And what we're doing here is just a very gentle lower back stretch and a little bit of muscle activation. So just in the kindest, most gentle way, waking your muscles up a little bit. Good, do the other side. And so again, super gentle. I mean, I could crank this in, but I don't need to do that. I'm just gonna hold the knee in. I'm gonna try to let my foot, this foot feel kind of floppy. I'm going to trust this, this movement, even though it's very easy, is giving me a little bit of lower back stretch and then breathe in and out full and deep here. Okay, we're going to windshield wipers next. We're gonna take our feet wide apart, wider than your hips, and then just <clears throat> very gently, let your knees rock side to side, only as far as it feels good for you to do. Again, not feeling like you need to force anything. And you're just feeling out your range of motion. You know, if you've been laying around and you haven't been moving a lot, you probably are much stiffer than normal. So you don't need to, to rush the stretching back out. Really pay attention to your breath. Let your belly stretch on the inhale. And let it relax on the exhale. Okay, super easy resting pigeon. So all we're doing is crossing the right ankle over the left knee. We're not hugging the legs in tight to the body like we might do in some of the other postures. To open the front of the hip, you're gonna take your hands to the tops of your thighs and press your hands on your thighs. So you're just increasing the space in the front of your groin. Take a good deep belly breath in and out. And super simple, just change sides. Gentle press of the thighs away from your belly if that feels good. If I have a sore lower back, this is also kind of one of the uh, go-to moves in that time when it's tender. Okay, good. Now we're gonna come to this easy sprout twist, I call this. So think of a sprout. And if you don't know much about sprouting, <laughs> you've got the seed and then it's gonna sprout open and two leaves pop up, almost always, all these plants, two little leaves. So these are your, your arms, your elbows are like your two leaves. 
but you want to stay really grounded in the seed so that you're keeping your knees and hips stacked. And if you're really tight, you know, just a little turn open might be all that your body really wants at the start. Now, as it feels good, you can start to open it up a little deeper. Think about stretching your side waist long and then stretching out across your chest and between your shoulders. Activate your breath now more predominantly in your heart center. And then just super easy roll over, do that on the other side. So again, the, you want to think about keeping your hips stacked behind you, your hands behind your head, and then it's a gentle turn open. You might be like me, one side might be much easier than the other. They don't have to match, just do what feels best for each side. Focusing on breath, think about pushing your hip down and lifting your heart and head up. So length through your spine and this gentle opening across the chest and between the shoulders. Good. Come lay back on your back and we're going to go, we're going to return to windshield wipers, feet nice and wide, and then rock your knees side to side. And then I call this next one an easy Lakshmi's twist. So Lakshmi is one of the goddesses and her symbol is a solar cross. So you're going to have both knees bent and the bottom one forward and the top one back. And then I'm on my elbow and I'm just looking for a really nice big side body stretch there. Full deep breath in and out. Good. And then we'll release down and do the same thing to the other side. Couple rounds of windshield wipers to start. And on this one, as your knee comes into the middle, think about stretching it long away from you, less so about trying to get the knee down. And then we'll come up onto your side. Top leg is behind you. Both knees are bent. If you want more stretch, you can work this leg, the back leg, top back leg deeper. Sometimes you need to ease up a little bit like I did there. Okay. Now, we're gonna go ahead and come back onto our back and open up the shoulders. I like a block for this one. If you don't need it, you could just kind of put your hands together or keep them shoulder distance apart. Our knees are bent. So you wanna think about um, stabilizing your lumbar spine. So we're not sucking the stomach in, we're not flattening our back. We wanna honor that there is, should be a little concave lumbar curve but we don't want that to exaggerate when we stretch our arms overhead. So our arms are gonna go up, a little belly hug, and then take the block, keep your elbows straight, press your shoulders down, and then reach your arms overhead. Keep the belly gently toned, and you're thinking about creating length through your torso as you reach your arms up overhead. Keep your arms overhead, stretch one leg straight, Hug your belly in gently to exaggerate that lengthening through the spine. If it arches, then it's shortened a little bit. So we want to keep it nice and long. Rebend the first leg and stretch the other leg out. And then extend both legs. You can point your toes, flex your feet, whatever you like there. And then let the block go and just stretch out big and full on the floor. Take a good deep heart breath. And then bring your arms next to your sides, bend your elbows, press your shoulders back and lift your chest up and then very gently lift your hips. Okay, so if you've been all curled up, then getting this open is gonna feel real good, but we don't wanna rush that because you know, like for me, it's been a week on the couch, so that all the tissues are kind of in that shape. So now just gently move back towards being more open. I love a block under my hips for bridge. It just feels great. For some of you, that might be too much. And so a folded towel or a folded blanket might be better. So it's gonna take a little bit of work to get your hips up and then slide your support underneath it. We're gonna just hold that for a couple breaths. 
And what this does is it naturally pushes your hips forward and that brings you into a little bit of a lower back arch. And to start off, our psoas muscles, which are deep in the groin and are hooked into our lower back, get to relax. But here in a moment, we're gonna just very gently stretch one at a time. Now, the same way that we tried not to let the back arch when our arms went overhead, we want that here. So you have some very gentle belly tone and then you're reaching out through one leg. And a couple of breaths there. If it's comfortable for you and your foot wants to turn out, you can let that happen. For some people, it will feel better to keep it straight forward. So just trust what you feel. And then go ahead, slide that other, your straight leg in and extend the other leg out. And you can keep your hands wherever you like. If you wanna stretch them overhead, feel free to do that. That feels good for me right now. Good deep belly breath, just letting the front of the belly, the groin and the top front of your thigh lengthen. And then only if it, would feel, if it feels great, stretch both legs straight. For some people, that's, it pulls too much on your lower back, and so it might not feel good. You could go back to both knees bent. So let's take about five more breaths in this passive posture. The body stays still. We focus on moving energy with the breath, increasing your respiratory rate, getting your heart to beat a little quicker maybe. Think about when we think about improving circulation, we have respiration and then the circulation of blood, lymph, which is um, a major function of our immune system. And then also in yoga, we're moving prana, which is life force energy. Okay, bend both knees if they were both straight and just pause for a moment, let your pelvis kind of reset and resettle. And then we'll lift the hips up and slide that block out. And then we're gonna do resting butterfly. Some of you won't need props, I like them. Um, and so you're just putting blocks or pillows right underneath your knees to support your knees. And that way you can decide how much your legs open. And then you can just let your hands rest where you like, maybe on your belly, maybe out to the side, maybe overhead. And we'll take about five breaths here. Really deep, rich, nurturing breaths. These breaths are moving energy through your body, but they are also stretching a little bit around your belly, around your internal organs, massaging your diaphragm, your heart, your lungs. So if there's any, um, you know, we can get stagnant energy when we're recovering. So just very gently getting energy to move freely again in your body. All right, so we're gonna prepare to move to part two, which are the standing postures. Now, if you felt like that was enough, you're not feeling great, you wanna be done, you know, that's a little bit is better than nothing. Um, and sometimes a little bit is better than a lot, depending on what your body needs. So if you're continuing on, we're going to come standing up now. I think I need to move this back a little bit. And like I said, we'll use the wall here or a door frame, or you could use a couch or chair. There's a little ambiance, uh, waterfall. Okay. So this first thing we're gonna do standing, I'm calling clock exercise. So think 12, three, six, what was that? 12, three, six, nine. We're gonna start with both arms at 12 overhead. Walk your feet back a little bit and then pull your hips back to help open up underneath your armpits and to stretch your spine. Now, don't push in so hard. You actually want to open this up. So your armpits lift up, your hips stretch back. 
You do want to feel a stretch through your spine, um, a lift sensation in your arms, and then a softening of your heart gently down. So not pushing down, but just softening down. A couple good, full, deep breaths. You know, play with what you're doing with your eyes, whether they're purposefully opened or closed. You can think about when recovering, you can start to come out now. So think about when you're recovering, you know, what's the, the balance you need between nurturing and energizing? And that we, we just do that really conscientiously, kindly, nurturing ourselves as we get moving again, but not to push or rush. Okay, so now we're going to have one arm up at 12. This is my left. I'm just going to call it my left. My brain's still a little foggy. So my left arm is up, and now I'm turning to the right. And I'm going to start to crawl my fingers back towards what for me is 9 o'clock here. So I'm reaching my arm straight back behind me. Now you want to make sure that you don't let your shoulder hunch forward. It might, if you're tight here, it's probably going to do that. So think about keeping um, this lengthening from your sternum across your shoulder. You can make it easier by walking farther away from the wall or the door for you. The other thing we wanna watch out for is that there's a tendency for the belly, hips, and ribs to press forward. So you're really trying to think about staying straight through the midline of your body and just reaching back from the shoulder. Take another breath here. Okay, now we're gonna walk back up to 12 and then out in front of us, this is three. Um, my left arm is in front of me. You can use your right hand and pull the arm across. Now, if you're in your door frame, just grab a hold of the door frame with your, reach your hand across you and turn your head in the opposite direction. So you should feel a gentle stretch behind and around your shoulder blade. Focus on your breath there, softening any tension that's built up back there. And the body likes to move nice and slow. And we do heal best when we're able to, to be in that state of rest and relaxation. Good, relax your arm down, roll it out. I'm gonna go to this uh, other wall to the other side. So you're starting with your right arm up at 12, and then you're walking it behind you as far down as it feels good for you. You're working on keeping that shoulder rolling back. A nice, strong center so you're not collapsing forward. A couple good, deep breaths here. Working on letting both shoulders relax down away from your ears. Good, and then walk your hand up and out in front of you, the opposite hand holds that wrist, and then you're turning. And again, think about keeping that shoulder down away from your ear. Working to release tension, not to create more. So if you're somewhere where it hurts, that's, you're not in the right place for yoga practice. You wanna be in a place where you feel like you can deepen your breath. that yoga is this practice of cultivating harmony. Okay, good, relax your arm down and give your shoulder a good roll. Okay, so we do 12 and then, what is this, three or nine, and then six, we'll put both hands on our hips. Root down, root your tailbone down, hug your belly gently in and up, and then just lift your heart. Squeeze your elbows together. You don't have to overwork this one. Just, you know, just think about strengthening your back body as you get a gentle opening in the front of your heart. We'll work in deeper in this direction later. Good, relax your arms, roll out your shoulders. And then just super gentle, move your head and neck, however feels best for you. All right, if you have the template and you're following along with the template, I realize I jumped ahead. So we'll do a couple rounds of just moving your arms with your breath. You know, a lot of these, the order doesn't really matter. Sometimes it does, but as long as what you do feels good and you're not forcing anything, you don't have to usually worry too much. 
Okay, keep your arms overhead. I'm interlacing my fingers, pressing my palms up, and then just rock side to side, stretching your side waist. You can move at whatever pace you like. You can hold the stretch, you can move slow, you can move in a quicker fashion that maybe feels a little like a massage, just whatever you like. Good, and relax your arms down. When you haven't done a lot of movement, even small movements can feel like a lot after a while. Okay, so now um, we're gonna do wall dog next, but you can do that with the chair if, you're, if it doesn't work out for you to be at the wall while you're watching the video. So hands can be on the edge, back edge of a chair or the couch or the wall. And again, uh, you know, when I'm teaching, I like to think about these three distinct actions. So the first is actually strengthening and stabilizing. So the armpits lift up, then purposeful and gentle stretch without compression. And so that's stretching the hips back. And then to distinguish between stretch and release. So then you're through your heart, you're softening. So I'm not pushing down. That, that actually is causing strain. I'm trying to release strain. Okay, good. And then come on up. I'm just going to check my sequence here. I don't want to get too far off track. Okay, wide-legged forward fold. So still at the wall with your hands on the chair. We're just coming to a half fold to start with our legs wide apart. So we walk the feet apart and then you're just walking your hands halfway down. Now we're going to get start to get into the point where we might do some forward folds and inversions and you have to decide is that helpful or unhelpful if you have congestion. So for me it actually doesn't really feel great to fold forward today. So I'm just going to kind of stay mostly in half folds. If it would feel good for you, go ahead, walk your hands down and then drop into a forward fold. Just take another breath or two there. And come on up standing tall. And we are finished with the wall work. I'm gonna might use that chair. The chair is a potential use later on, so keep that. Let me just move that a little bit. Okay, well, we're gonna take goddess squat next. So goddess squat your feet are wide. Uh, turn your toes out. I left my socks on today to be cozy. You can decide if if you, that helps or not, uh, it's sliding a little bit. So maybe take your socks off if you're too slidey. And then we're gonna squat down. And wiggle out a little bit, side to side. Good, and come on up, Stanley. I am gonna take them off. And I think I need a little more see my upper body a little bit more there. Okay. All right, let's take oh, my favorite pose of all time, the side angle pose. There's just so much you can do with this pose. So you're turning, um, I've got my left foot turned out and my right foot is turned in and it doesn't matter which side you're on. I'll just say front and back from here on out. So the front knee, the one that's bent. And I'm just gonna reach the top arm straight up first. Take a good full deep breath here. Um, if we're recovering, I don't wanna hold postures for too long. Kinda of wanna just move in and out of them to help get energy moving and be in them long enough where you feel like you get the benefit from them but that you're not fatiguing yourself. So let's go do the other side. So, Bending the front knee, the back foot turns in a little bit. Hand to hip to start. Make sure that you've not let your hips collapse forward, which is common in this pose. So you pull your hips back a little bit. 
and then just the top arm straight up to the sky first. And you know, this is, uh, there's kind of like three levels of this pose, I, I would say. So this is level one. In a moment, we'll do level two, and then I'll talk you through level three if you wanna work in deeper. Good, come on up, let's go back to side one. Hips back, top arm straight up, and then just stretch your arm alongside your ear. So this is level two. And then traditionally, the bottom hand is down on the ground for this pose. Um, but I'm taking it easy today. And if you're recovering, I'm gonna encourage you to do that too. So just a nice big side body stretch. Come on up and take side two. Lean the arm alongside your ear. Probably a little bit of effort to keep those hips back in line with your ankles and heels rather than collapsing forward over your back toe. So just a little belly hug, a little tailbone root. Good, and come on up. Okay, and then uh, triangle with support with the chair or the wall to make it a little more gentle. I know, I said we were done with the chair. <laughs> um, my head is still a little fuzzy. All right, so I've got my hand on the chair, I could have my hand on the wall, and then I just lean in. And then I don't have to worry about getting down to the ground with that bottom hand. And just really opening up through the inner thigh and the side waist here. If you prefer, you can go in deeper. Good, come on up. Same thing, other side. So we've just got both legs straight and we're just leaning in. Pick the variation that you like. Good, and you'll come on up and then standing pyramid pose. I do like chair or wall support for this because it helps people not cheat. This is one of those poses that almost everybody cheats a little bit. It's okay, you know, it feels indulgent sometimes to go in, into a full stretch. But what will really benefit your lower back is if you keep your hips squ as square as you can. So that means um, multi-dimensionally, side to side, up and down, and front and back. So you really wanna kind of feel like you're, the back of your pelvic bones line up, that these crescents match each other on both sides, and that the height, so what happens for a lot of people, they fold and then the pelvis tilts down towards that straight leg. So you're gonna to try to keep your front leg hip up and back. And then when you fold, try to keep your back flat, not rounded. And with the chair, it's nice. You can cross your arms and just let your head rest there. Take a couple deep breaths in your most comfortable version of this position. Okay, let's come up and do the other side. So we've got one foot in front of the other, both legs are straight. Really trying to get our hips squared off and then hinge. And once you get cozy in your pose, just breathe nice and deep and full. All right, we'll neutralize. Chair dog, wall dog. And we're coming up on finishing part two, which I kind of consider these the great everyday stretches, that, the, that series that we just did. Um, and then we'll move now to some deeper stretch. So this could be a place where maybe you feel finished, like maybe that was enough. Um, and you just want to rest a little bit. If you wanna carry on, we're gonna work into poses that are gonna feel more really like stretching. So this is gonna be the part that feels great if you've been feeling really tight. Um, the strap will be helpful and uh, making sure that you're not overdoing any stretching here is important. Okay, if 
you're congested and doing child's pose or puppy pose doesn't seem like a good idea. You can come in front of your couch or chair and take the child's pose leg variations. So your big toes are together, knees are wide apart. If that's difficult, you could put pillows underneath your butt to give you a little support that's gentler on your knees. And then just cross your arms and let your head rest down. So you get the kind of restorative quality of child's pose um, without having the inversion making you feel congested or making it difficult to breathe. So we'll just take a couple breaths in either that pose, or you can come to traditional puppy, or, oh, this is puppy, or child's. I'm gonna come in this upright version of child's. So just a couple breaths in the version of that downward facing position that feels best for you. letting your body have this opportunity to be gentle and calm and for you to work on improving circulation simply with a strong breath. Okay, let's come up and into all fours. You can feel free to pad your knees. And then we're just gonna take this very easy bird dog, variations to bird dog is, is gonna be usually all fours where you're working arms, legs or arms away from each other. I'm working on just extending back with the toes tucked under, pressing back through the heel. So I get a nice calf Achilles stretch. And then cross that foot behind the other and Press your hip out so you get a nice side crescent stretch. Feel free to move your head and neck however might feel best for you. Come back to all fours and repeat on the other side, just taking the other leg back, reaching through your calf and heel. Squeeze your quad above the knee and that'll enhance that stretch in the back of the leg. Cross your foot behind you and press your hip out to the opposite side, stretching to that side waist. Okay, then we're gonna come back to a downward facing position of choice. And if you down, like downward dog, um, downward dog feels so good for a lot of us. This is going to be a really good time to massage your hips and legs a little bit. But again, if congestion is an issue or if you're having blood pressure issues, um, you can take that supported child's pose, upright supported child's pose, or any other position that feels good for you. So if you're, if you're liking downward dog right now, let's go there. And we'll just take about a minute just to move around in whatever way feels best for each of us. So when you're recovering, you know, always give yourself permission to rest as much as you want and need it. If you're in downward dog, you might pedal your legs, you might kind of rock your hips, move and sway your head. Maybe make it one-legged and reach your leg up and back behind you. If you did one leg, do the other. Start to even it out. come down to hand the knees. Okay, we're coming to our belly next for Sphinx. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> if you've been curled up, this, you're, like I said at the beginning, the psoas can get really tight. If you've been in fetal position, it can be really tight right here. And if your psoas gets tight, it's gonna pull on your lower back. So 
make sure this back bend is the right amount for you, which might be hardly at all right now. You cross your arms and let your forehead rest, rest straight down. For me, it feels real good to be out of the curled in. And so you can come into a higher crescent or sphinx. You can rock a little bit side to side. Let your head sway if you like. And then just go ahead and bend one knee and circle that ankle. And as long as it feels okay for you with your hand, reach back for your foot and maybe pull the heel in a little closer. So again, you're, we're countering the curled in position. Deep breath, so make sure you don't lose your breath. Switch sides. Good, release and then push back to your downward facing position of choice. This is another, I use this child's pose in my prenatal classes. I call this the mama tiger pose. Um, it's a laboring position, but it's a nice version of a squat, which opens your pelvis and let your internal organs relax down. So it can be good for your digestion and not affect your respiration. So you could come into classic child's pose. If down dog felt great for you, maybe revisit there too. So just take another couple of breaths. And then we're gonna move into a low single leg, uh, low lunge series. And um, these, uh, these uh, postures are great for stretching when you don't want to exert too much energy. Um, the blocks can help. You could also, if you don't have blocks at home, Use a chair or the edge of your couch. So you're just going to take one foot forward and the opposite knee is back and down. And you're in basic form to start. So in this mid range. And then I'm going to take you through a few variations. So the first one is to come into a forward fold, which bring both hands the inside of your front foot. Again, it could still be on blocks or on the chair. And some of you might want a forward fold. You might bring an elbow to the ground or to a block, maybe both. Couple of breaths here. And then we'll come up and potentially go to the upright version. So you bring your hand to your front knee, make sure your pelvis is nice and balanced, and then reach your arms overhead. You could curl back deeper here if that felt good for you. And then the twist, you're turning towards your front knee one hand supporting you on the ground, the other arm reaching up. Make sure you can breathe well. And if it's hard to breathe, you know, find, find a position that's a little gentler. Personally, I'm on the edge. It's odd to be on the edge, but I'm on the edge and I'm honoring that. Okay, and then the next one is not great for everybody, but if you're comfortable to bend your back leg and reach back with your hand, you can. If that doesn't feel good, Skip it. If you want to stretch your quad a little more, just return to the Sphinx. This is really honestly one of my personal favorite poses. Um, I love anything that is multi-purpose and this does a whole lot at one time. 
and a whole lot of good if you've been curled up in fetal position, um, if, if it's right for your body. Another breath or two. Okay, and let's take the whole series on the other side. So nice and gently coming out. You know, if you wanna take a downward facing position for a breath or two between sides, feel free to do that. So coming into first basic low lunge. Catching your breath and encouraging your belly to expand with your inhalation and to relax with your exhalation. I'm using my arms to really hold my upper body weight and then I'm letting my hips soften forward. I don't need to push down into gravity. I can melt into gravity with maybe even a little resistance back so that the tissues really feel like um, they can lengthen without strain. Okay, so this is now the part where maybe you wanna come in deeper to a, a more of a forward fold version so hands can come to the inside of the front knee Maybe you work your elbow a little closer to the ground. We're just taking a few rounds of breath here. Beginning to work your way back up, and if it feels right for you, taking the more <laughs> upright, active version. Sometimes balance is tricky there. Arms to your sides can help. Strong through your legs. You're pressing down strong through your legs. Stabilizing your pelvis and lumbar spine. And then stretching up and out. Maybe curling back a little bit. And let's come to the twist. So you're turning towards your front knee. Deep breaths. And then maybe add the quad stretch, but maybe go to your belly instead. our way out. Come to a neutral downward facing position. So remember you've got all those child's pose, puppy pose, downward dog variations. So pick the one that feels best for you. That's going to be our, our last um, kind of more active posture there. We're going to come to seated butterfly next and sitting up on a little bit of height is nice for that so folded blanket pillow couch cushion all right bring the soles of your feet together and then put your hands behind you so you can lean back and what we want to work on here is getting the lower back to dive in and up and then your chest to open Squeeze your shoulder blades together and any of this curling in, you know, getting that to really open up. Think about inflating your belly and your lungs too. And then only if it feels great, hinge from your hips and fold forward. If it, if it curls you in and you really you feel your energy just congested, then this one's better. So just take which one feels better for you. We're going to come up and sit cross-legged. Um, let's do this together. I'll mirror you for this one. I'm going to assume most of you put your 
right leg in front of the left. So I'll do the opposite. Okay, so you have your right leg in front of the left, and you're gonna lean this way. <laughs> so what is that? That's your right, you're leaning to your right. Let your sideways stretch. Let your head hang down over your shoulder if that feels okay for you. And then keep leaning to your right, but take your left arm down and away so you feel your side neck stretch a little more. Make sure you don't strain it, just very gentle. Good, come upright and then twist to your right. Try to keep your hips even behind you, so try not to let your right hip pull back with you. You're actually resisting the right hip forward, so you get a good twist to your waist and in the area of your internal organs, so you get a little tonifying action for your digestive system. Turn your head as far over your right shoulder as it feels good for you to stretch it a little bit. Good, release back to the middle and just take a very gentle forward fold and look down at the floor so you get a nice release in the back of your neck. If you're on the more flexible side and you wanna come into a deeper forward fold, of course you're welcome to do that. It come up let's switch sides so now you'll have your left shin in front of your right and we're leaning to your left opening up your right side waist let your head hang down over your shoulder as long as that feels okay and then stretch your arm away get a nice stretch on the side of your neck Come up and twist to your left. Keep your hips level behind you. Turn your head. Good, release back to the center. Let it be a very gentle forward lean. If your head relaxes down. And then only if it feels great, you can go into a deeper forward fold there. So we're getting closer to the close to the end of the practice here. <clears throat> Keep your strap nearby. And we're going to take cactus pose, cactus twist. So your arms are like one of the cigar cactuses. Hips square. Keep your right shoulder pressing down and take both knees to your left. Try to keep your hips stacked on top of each other if you can. Just like we did in the sprout twist, think about long spine and the twist happening through here through your waist. So the shoulder blade is working to the floor. Good, bring your knees up to the middle and take them to the right as you keep that left shoulder pressing back and down. Pretty simple posture, so strong focus on the breath. Come back to your back. A stronger bridge now, so pressing your shoulders back and down and lifting your hips. And there's a few variations you could take here. So you might take your hands underneath your hips and then rock your shoulders under. Some of you might like to put your hands under your hips. You could revisit extending the legs out. And then go ahead and release your hips. Give yourself a good cross arm hug. Cross the elbows tight across your chest. Inhale, open up. Exhale, re-wrap, other arm on top. Check 
my template. Okay, we're gonna revisit hamstring strap. So take your right leg up. And again, you can put a strap around your foot. This left leg can stay bent or straight, but you wanna to try to not let your lower back really flatten. You wanna keep a little tiny concave curve in your lumbar spine. So moving your legs that way will help you do that. It makes it harder to bring your leg up higher, but that's not important. So a nice neutral pelvis, and then just letting the back of the leg lengthen out. Think about keeping the left leg pressing down. That will actually help release your left leg so as also. And then have happy baby. So you can hold on to your strap or behind your knee or the outer edge of your foot. Try to keep the knee hugging in towards the midline of your butt. Well, not your midline, in towards your armpit. And then we'll take the right leg to a side stretch. And then resting tree, the right foot comes to the inseam of your left leg and let the right knee relax down and out. Deep belly breath there. Then twisted tree, take your knee to the left, stretch your right arm out to the right. And if you wanna increase the stretch, the right leg can then go straight to the left. Deep breath. Okay, and then that whole series on the other side. So left leg up, tilt your pelvis down, so the top tilts forward. Right leg can be bent or straight. And then as you pull the left leg in, try not to let your pelvis tuck back up. So that, you know, that um, resting pigeon stretch we did earlier, we push the thighs away from the belly. You can have that idea here too. Half happy baby. Really working hard to keep that right hip pushing down. It wants to lift up and go to the left. And then left leg to the left. Resting tree, left knee bends, left foot to the right inseam. Good belly stretch. And then wrap it, twisted tree. And if it feels good, you can extend the leg straight out. back to your back. Two more little short series. Working a little deeper into the hips and lower back. Resting pigeon, right ankle over left knee. And then if you want, you can draw the left leg in tighter this time. If this feels better, just hang out there. And then put your left foot on the floor, cross the right knee over the left knee, wiggle your feet a little to your right, and then drop your knees to the left. Don't go too deep into it if it doesn't feel great. And then you're gonna bring your left arm across your body. And if you know eagle arms and that works well in your body, you can take that too. Uh, for me, I'm just gonna cross the arm across the body. So my knees are to the left, and then my left arm is twisted to the right, head to the right. Good, unwind and take resting pigeon on the other side, left ankle over right knee. 
right knee into the chest if that feels good in your body. Deep breaths. And then right foot back to the floor, left knee crosses over right knee, wiggle your feet a little to the left and then drop your knee to the right. And if it feels good, sweep your right arm to the left. Breathe behind your right shoulder blade. You can take those eagle arms if you prefer. Feel the tension that is perhaps built up as you've been recovering. Allow yourself the opportunity to release it rather than to increase it. So being gentle. Okay, let's unwind. Full happy baby. <clears throat> Both knees to your armpits. You can hold on behind your knees or reach up to your feet. Rock a little bit, wiggle. We're gonna hold on to the inner knees and take the legs out to the side, stretching your inner thighs. Circle your ankles, wiggle your toes. Bring your feet together for resting butterfly or revisit constructive rest, whichever feels better. Reach your arms up, circle out your wrists. Wiggle your fingers. Relax your arms and just let your head rock side to side. Give your knees a good hug into your chest and lift your head up away from the floor if that feels okay. You're coming into seed form, pulling in really, really tight. And then inhale, stretch it all out, deep breath in. And it is time to rest. So I wanna say a few things about resting. You can just go right into Shavasana. Just lay down, let your arms rest to your sides, close your eyes. Um, inversions can give your circulatory system a little bit of a jump. And remember that your lymph is part of your circulatory system. So um, it's tied into your bloodstream, but it, it functions because of movement and body position. So putting your legs upside down can actually help move any lymph that maybe has been a little stagnant as you've just been resting. But taking your legs up can also increase your blood pressure. So you want to think about that balance in your body. And if an inversion, a resting inversion would feel good, a really simple one is just to put your shins up on your couch edge or a chair and then also potentially to put your feet up kind of like on the top of it so you might take your knees to the couch seat and then figure out a way to let your feet rest like up on the top of the back of the couch and then just let your arms be positioned however feels most comfortable for you Okay, so choose the position that you want to rest in. I'm going to sit up so I can speak easier. And if you're congested, then sitting up with your back against the couch might be a nice option for you as well. But taking some time just to be really still in your body is very beneficial for your brain and your nervous system. So hang in here with me for a few more moments, if you will, and let yourself rest into a position that you can be still in for about four minutes. Certainly, you can stay longer. I wouldn't, though, let yourself fall asleep with your legs up. So if you're worried you might fall asleep, and your legs are up, you can set a timer or maybe just take a different position. 
I'm going to take you through what I call a white light healing meditation. And so it does have the intention of bringing health and vitality back to all of the systems of our beingness, so our body, our heart, our mind, our soul. So take a moment to picture a place inside you that feels like a center point. You can really pick any place. There's no right or wrong answer. Just picking an internal and central point. And then as you're breathing in and out, breathe in and out of that center. So maybe you can picture a sun and know that the sun has that central gathering of light energy and its light pulses in and out of that center. And then its light shines concentrically out in every direction. Maybe you've seen those um, structured balls that collapse in on themselves and then expand out. Have a sense of pulsation in this central point that you've chosen for yourself where you feel like you're activating your inner light. And then just begin to imagine that you can move that ball of light energy all throughout your body and as that light energy moves throughout your body it's going to bring clarity and healing infusing you with a sense of revitalization so you can let that ball of light energy travel however you like but I will guide those of you who are interested in being guided so we're going to imagine that ball of light energy splitting in two and moving all the way down to our feet. And feel that light energy in the arches of your feet. This is um, associated with a Tai Chi, Qi Gong, Chinese medicine point, which is the bubbling spring in the arches of your feet. Just imagine the sparkly light sunlight on water, shimmering in your feet, clearing, cleansing, restoring the energy in your feet. Send that light energy to your toes and to your heels, and to your ankles, and then allow those two balls of light to move up through your shins, calves, into the knees, pausing here in the knees. Feel that light energy active, clearing and healing in your knees. Clearing not just the joints, but also the channels of energy that connect all the parts of your body to each other. You could call them blood vessels, capillaries, lymph vessels, nerves, and in our yoga practice, we call them nadis, rivers of energy moving through every part of you, connecting, nurturing, supporting all the parts as one integrated whole. Imagine those balls of light energy moving from your knees up through your thighs and through the groins. Maybe you imagine them kind of moving around each other in your pelvis and lower back and low belly. And then let that light energy mer merge back into one ball in the back of your navel. This place where you first received energy from your mother's body. Taking a moment to honor the idea of universal mother. Mother energy can be tricky. Think of universal mother, 
and if you have a beautiful relationship with your own mother to honor that for a moment too universal mother energy nurturing you giving you life healing guidance restoration and let that ball of light energy move up through your solar plexus. Take a deep breath. Let your ribs expand at that place where they meet. This is the home of your diaphragm, central to your respiration. Let it feel soft and resilient, flexible and buoyant, moving down when you breathe in and pressing up when you breathe out, massaging your heart and your lungs, helping to keep energy flowing well through your body, clearing any illness and stagnancy out of your body, helping you to revitalize, rejuvenate, recover. Move the light energy up into the center of your heart center. So we know the heart is slightly tilted and placed left. Feel the center part of your sternum. Have a sense of that light energy healing your heart and your lungs. Moving down through the, or rather up through the trachea and the esophagus. Moving energy up through your throat. In through your sinus cavities, nostrils, ear canals. Moving up to gently Bless your brain stem. Feeling that healing light energy travel all throughout your nervous system, through the spinal column, cord, nerves, energy flowing out and back to your brain stem. And then that light energy moving into the central part of your skull, of your brain, of your mind. Bringing a sense of illumination, peace, clarity. Imagine your mind gently shining outward. Let yourself have a sense of inner radiance. Resting quietly here for a few more breaths. Feeling the benefit of relaxation and the benefit of rest because it is our most optimal way to healing. We all heal best when we can rest, relax, renew, restore. Take a couple deep breaths now with a sense of clearing any toxicity out, anything that's left, clearing that out. Let your eyes gently flutter open and closed a couple times. Still recline on the floor, stretch out. If you've got your legs up, bring them down and come to resting fetal position on one side or the other for a moment or two. And find your way back up to seated if you like. Otherwise, maybe settle in for a good nap. <laughs> if you're seated upright, you can just top off your practice and move your head, neck, shoulders. Give yourself a good hug, a good stretch, a re-hug. And we'll finish this practice here. I'll chant the sound of Om. Feel free to join me if you like. The sound of Om for me is a reminder of our interconnectedness. And as I chant the sound of Om, I imagine tapping into that universal mother energy that wants us to recover, that wants us to renew and restore. And as I chant Om, I offer that energy back out. Breathing out through the nose and back in. Oh. Full deep breath. Perhaps a gentle bow to your heart. The life of my heart honors yours. Namaste. All right, everyone. Wishing you all well. Take good care of yourself and each other. And um, if you're curious about what's going on with me or with Shine, you can visit 
um, shineyoga.com or kobenoble.com. Find me on social media and check in that way. Uh, if you'd like to donate to the studio as we're operating on super limited capacity, um, you can find out how to do that at shineyoga.com as well. All right, take good care.